Dangerously cold temperatures are expected to impact millions of people this weekend across the northern United States. On Thursday, temperatures fell below zero in the Dakotas, parts of Ohio, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. The extreme cold forced schools and businesses to close throughout the Midwest. As the bitter blast continues eastward, it's expected to cause dangerous conditions throughout the northern plains, the upper Midwest region, and parts of New England. CBS News weather producer David Parkinson joins me now. So David, what should we expect to see heading into this weekend? I mean, this is kind of a sorry state of our winter when we talk about this being the coldest air of the year. And we're not really all that smashing that many records. We broke four records this morning. But essentially what's going on is we've got a jet stream starting to dive down, a little bit of some Arctic air that's starting to make its way south. And as a result, what you're going to see here is that you're going to see it's primarily northern New England and also parts of the Midwest that are going to be the coldest. But in fairness, this was the sub-zero area this morning. As we advance this into tomorrow, one of the interesting things that you're going to note is the cold's going to back off a little bit to the west, but it's going to be bitterly cold uh, in the northeast. So negative 22 in Caribou, that is rivaling pretty much anything that I've seen this month. Negative 13 in Concord in New Hampshire, so be happy that the primaries are done. Negative 2 in Lemonster, these are actual temperatures. These are not feels like temperatures. So knock a good 10 or 20 degrees off of these numbers, depending how windy it is where you are. Negative 9 in Burlington, negative 18 in Lake Placid. So even if you're in the city of Boston, it'll be about 4. In New York, it'll be just over 12 or 13 degrees. So it's going to be really bitterly cold. Uh, but then we rebound nicely on into next week. Other big story in terms of weather is flooding. So every place you see a red dot or circle here, that is going to be a place where there's moderate flooding. Purple indicates major flooding or close to record flooding. And you're seeing across these 10 states, there's a lot of places, particularly here in Mississippi, where they got uh, close to or over a foot of rain over the past week. And then rain coming next week, there's a spotty area in Alabama of three to five inches. This is the last thing they need there. On up into the uh, northern parts, the uplands of South Carolina, and then even Mississippi, which has just been beleaguered by that week of rain. Uh, there's another two to three inches of rain there. So uh, a reprieve until early next week, and then the rain does return to the south. So that's the sort of good news, bad news. The rivers will start to go down. They are cresting this weekend, uh, but that is not going to be, unfortunately, the end of the flooding, probably. In fact, uh, NOAA is forecasting a really bad flood season on the Missouri River as all the snow melt does melt into the spring, and that uh, is on top of all of the uh, flooding that they had last year. So one last thing to note, quick little bit of, of intrigue that we mentioned last week, and it's happening again. We've got a wicked jet stream. You can see just how far it deep, uh, digs down, and that is where the cold air is. So that is the flow of uh, air over the Atlantic Ocean just south of the jet path. So we re uh, recorded those record speeds going between New York and London uh, last week. We're just not going to probably do it this time because you can see this is the route that most planes take transatlantically. This is where the jet stream is. But there are going to be some wicked winds, 125 mile an hour winds over the weekend in Iceland as well with a big old low pressure system here and a whole heat dome headed to Europe in case you know. President's Week takes you uh, abroad. Well, if you have an exciting President's Week or Valentine's Day, you've got our, our forecast, planes and weather-wise. David Parkinson, thank you. Sure thing.